Um, so this is most definitely work in progress for me. This is most definitely stuff that I've been working on now for 12 years and still <coughs> going strong. And I like completely impossible challenges. Uh, and I hate to lose. I never lose. I just need to, as the Marines say, I need to go to hell and regroup and attack again. So back in 2004, I started something, and I'm still working on it. And this is the very simple technical explanation of what I'm trying to solve. And I put in that line, I also put in, of course, information that makes it relevant for passwords. So what does it say? Anyone? Anyone using ngrep, please? Yeah. I'm using network grep, but I'm looking for the word password in plain text email. Because as you know, lots and lots and lots and lots of people are still sending and receiving passwords by plain text. And it's not going away. One of the things that I would like to see more people do, I would really like to see a talk at PasswordsCon on this subject alone, is, would be if somebody could actually do this on their uh, board or firewall towards the internet to look for the amount of emails going in and out every day that contains the word password. Nothing more, nothing less. Or eventually, try to put it into context to see if it says new password colon and something. Log those passwords. See the quality of those passwords. See if it uh, says in the subject field, Here's your new password. Here, is, here are your login credentials, as an example. I have done that. And it's sort of funny to watch. And it also makes you angry. And it makes you start laughing and crying all at the same time. Now, since people won't stop sending plain text, plain text email with passwords in, we need to try to secure the email. But as we all know, trying to convince people to change their behavior is difficult. I was in London a couple of weeks ago speaking at the SANS European Security Awareness Summit, and I heard this wonderful story on how to change people's behavior, specifically teenage girls. I don't know if the story is true, but at some school somewhere in the world, they had a problem in the women's restrooms at a, a, a teenage school. The teenage girls went into the restroom and they put on lipstick. And to make sure that the lipstick was really working as intended, they would walk up to the mirror and make a kiss on the mirror. And the people cleaning the restrooms were complaining about this because removing all that lipstick was difficult. It was annoying. And they talked about it at school. How can we change the behavior of these girls? Because just telling them that, stop doing it, didn't work. So somebody came up with a clever idea. They invited all the girls into the restrooms. And they said, hey, girls, you need to stop doing this. And the girls were like, well, yeah, but it's, you know, lipstick is important. It's supposed to you know, look good and all that stuff. I, I don't know the entire explanation of it. Um, and then the headmaster said, well, we, need to, you know, we, we just want to show you how difficult it is to remove these stains on the mirror. So one person from the cleaning personnel takes up a, 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 you know, a shrub that you usually use to, to do the floors with. And this person walks over to one of the toilets, uh, put it down into the toilet, and then over to the mirror and start cleaning the mirror. And now for that, not a problem anymore. Perhaps a little bit rude way to do it, but a nice example, in a way, on how to change people's behavior. Now, if you tell people not to send passwords by plain text, ain't going to work. That's my simple opinion. So, Back in January 1999, RFC 2487 was published, SMTP service extension for secure SMTP over TLS. And in February 2002, that was deprecated, and we had RFC 3207, which is the SMTP service extension for secure SMTP over transport, transport layer security. A good RFC title. 
and it is opportunistic encryption of email between two ma mail servers. In a mail server exchange, you will open a connection on TCP port 25, which is SMTP. Uh, this is plain text. You will receive 220 mail example org, you know, that's the name of the mail server you're connecting to. You will send an ELO command, and then the server will respond. This is still plain text with 250 star TLS. So the server says, I do have star TLS, and if you support it as well, we can use it. And then you, as the client, which means the other mail server, your mail server, will say, oh, wow, you have star TLS, okay. And then you will initiate the start, start the TLS negotiation, and from there, the rest is encrypted. Anybody see a problem with this? Well, the initial connection here is plain text. And what have we learned about this? Well, here's an example of a, a mail header received. ESMTP TLS DH -E RSA AS 256 SHA. So here we are talking good encryption. One of the many problems here is the initial plain text connection with the mail servers responding by 250 star TLS. That can be removed in a man in the middle attack. You can just change one letter and everything will be plain text. And the RFCs for email says that if you are sending email, if you have a public server connected to the internet, you are required to accept plain text email and you are required to accept sending plain text email on the internet. That's part of the game of this. So a couple of years ago, I launched a service called startheles.info. Uh, and just to illustrate you know, how what a kind of asking asshole I can be, I went to Oslo and talked to a friend of mine, and I bought him one pizza and one Coca-Cola, and I said, I need you to do some development for me because I don't know any programming at all. And he said, yeah, I sort of knew that when you said you wanted to buy me pizza and a, and a Coca-Cola. So he made this website, startheles.info, and the only thing you could do there is to type in domain, and in the back end, we will look up the MX records for that domain, and we will connect to those mail servers. We will see if they support Star TLS, and if they do, we will use pretty much the same rules as the SSL lab service from Qualys to evaluate you know, the strength, the, the uh, uh, configuration of the TLS support on the remote mail server. And we will give them a grade from A, perfect, to F, completely fail. Or no star TLS available at all. Now, when two Norwegians do that, it's like not too many could really care. But I happen to know a couple of people around the world, so two organizations that I talked to were EFF and the ACLU in the US, especially Christopher Sohoin at ACLU, and he really liked this service. Type in a domain name, click, and to wait for just a couple of seconds, and oh, what do you know? Apple doesn't have Star TLS support at all. So I talked to Chris a couple of uh, uh, months after launching this in Las Vegas, and he said that, well, he called the legal department of Apple and said, hey, you guys don't support Star TLS, and you're all, uh, all about privacy, right? Okay, well, Star TLS for SMTP is a standard that came about in 2002. There are no competing standards, and you're still not supporting it. And 72 hours afterwards, Apple supported Star TLS on the mail servers. That was Apple. And he also called Microsoft and Yahoo and a few other services as well. And I also talked to people back home in Norway. Our National Security Authority, not the NSA, but still NSA in Norway, they wrote a guide. <clears throat> I didn't have anything to do with that. Uh, they wrote a guide saying that Star TLS for SMTP is a smart thing to have, and if you are uh, in a position where you have to, you know, if you are delivering services to the Norwegian government in, let's say, special circumstances, we really want you to use Star TLS. And they wrote a guide on that, and a short time after that, the, uh, uh, the uh, 
supervisory financial authority of Norway, they send out a letter to banks and financial institutions in Norway and say that, hey, we are implementing Star TLS. And sometimes you send us reports that you know, shouldn't be plain text, so we want you to implement Star TLS as well. And the Ministry of Education in Norway, they did, they did the same thing for universities and high schools in Norway. They said, here's the NSA guide from Norway, please implement. And what we saw, Google suddenly also came up in their transparency report. They do every month, they now do numbers on how many emails or percentage-wise in and out of Google are now using Star TLS. Now, when we launched StarTLS.info, we saw approximately 20% of domains on the internet using StarTLS. Six months after that, thanks to ACLU and EFF especially, we had gone past 50% on a worldwide basis. And did it switch and duplicate? So now, if you go to the, you see here in Norwegian, but that's not so difficult anyway. Um, it's, it looks encrypted, it's really not. It's an ordinary language, I know. But here you actually see the graphs of, this is outgoing and this is incoming to Gmail. And I'm looking now at the graphs for one year back into time. And here you see incoming, this is the most interesting one. You can actually see it goes from January 2016, we were at like 55, 60%. Now we are getting much, much closer to the goal. And this is really good. I can reveal the fact that I'm not a big fan of mass surveillance but I don't mind seeing the bad guys getting caught by the police. But again, the initial connection is plain text. And we have seen, as evidenced through the EFF, we have seen a couple of examples that we were not really happy with. So first of all, there's a story about Thailand. There were some riots in Thailand, and people, Google, suddenly discover that almost all email coming out of Thailand and going to Gmail, a lot of that email used to use Star TLS. All of a sudden, almost no email from Thailand, the country of Thailand, were using StartTLS when sending to Gmail. So if you do implement StartTLS for SMTP, you suddenly have an option that allows you to see if somebody's actually doing man in the middle attacks against you that didn't exist before. Gmail saw that, oh, somebody's clearly doing a man in the middle attack against the country of Thailand, more or less, for email. And in the US, Somebody also discovered Golden Frog. They discovered that a wireless broadband internet uh, access provider, for some reason, and I haven't seen an explanation for that, they were also suddenly removing Star TLS from mail connections for their customers. And somebody discovered that and said, hey, 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 there's something wrong here. The EFF has a project Star TLS everywhere. I'm not sure if that's really up and running much more anymore now, but the thing is, this plain text connection is not good. So we have to do something more to protect plain text uh, email or to, pro to protect the very, you know, not so well protected Star TLS uh, SMTP. And the answers for that is to implement DNSSEC support. Raise your hand if you know what DNSSEC is. Okay, so there are quite a few doesn't. Okay, well, DNS is plain text. It's just like calling 
you know, the reception at the hotel and ask for a taxi, or what is the number for the taxi central? And they will tell you, well, the number is blah, 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 blah. That is a plain text connection, and you don't know if anybody is doing a man in middle attack to the response you get. You don't even know if you're actually talking to the reception at a hotel or, or university or somebody else. So by adding DNSSEC, we are adding uh, digital signatures to DNS. So if you ask what is the IP address for a given website or a given mail server, suddenly you have dig uh, digital signatures that can be verified for these. And that makes DNS a lot more secure. As soon as we've done that, we can then add uh, Dane and what's called TLSA records in DNS. What you do then is, on your mail server, you have a digital certificate. And you will put information about your digital certificate into your DNS information. And that information, again, is signed by DNSSEC. So I have a mail server, you have a mail server, and we both support SART TLS. And then suddenly, both of us also support DNSSEC for our domains. Now, I can look up information in DNS in a secure way, and I will be given the exact and the correct IP address for your mail server. That's number one. That's DNSSEC. So I know which iPad IP address is yours, and I connect to that one. Your server supports Start TLS, but then I can also use DNSSEC to receive information about your digital certificate on your server. And then I know that I am going to, I'm going to force the use of Start TLS to you, and I know what your certificate looks like. And if somebody does a man in the middle attack, they can't spoof your certificate. So I will either send encrypted email to you using Start TLS to your certificate, or I will say, no, 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 there's something wrong about your certificate, somebody is spoofing you, and no mail will be sent at all. There's a plugin from uh, Czech Republic uh, for Google Chrome, DNSSEC TLSA Validator, and that will show you information on websites, whether they are running DNSSEC, and eventually if they also do have uh, Dane TLSA records today, and there are some servers that does this for you. So I took myself the liberty of having a look at rub.de. And as you can see, they have DNSSEC, and they have TLSA, and they also have Start TLS in place. So congratulations. And Germany was, until just a very short while ago, Germany was the one country in the world driving DNSSEC, Dane TLSA, forward. But back in February this year, I tweeted one message to my hosting provider in Norway, Domain Shop, and I said, congratulations on having DNSSEC. When will you allow me to set up Dane TLSA records? And as usual, they didn't reply. I've been a customer there for 10 years and essentially have almost never responded to me ever. This was in February. And now, approximately two months ago, they replied to my tweet from February. And it was basically, now you can give it a, a, a try, smiley face. And what they had did, not only had they enabled DNSSEC like almost two years ago, but they also enabled Dane TLSA. And Domain Shop is the big, biggest domain name registrar in Norway. So just overnight, almost 45,000 domains in Norway suddenly had DNSSEC and Dane TLSA support, and we are way ahead of Germany and any other country in the world. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so now I'm just looking for more people to adopt this stuff. I, I had to do this, sorry. I'm kind of proud of it. There are some issues with this that you need to, to be aware of. Uh, first of all, implementing DNSSEC and Dane TLSA requires you to need uh, quite a bit about, well, uh, cryptography and PKI. And if you go to 
small organizations, small IT departments in public organizations or commercial companies or whatever, they have absolutely no clue how to configure this. And this is also some stuff that needs to be maintained pretty frequently. And that's one of the things that I'm talking to the Norwegian government about. You know, we have so many organizations, very small organizations in Norway, and we don't think they can handle this. How can we solve that problem? Should we say that nobody's allowed to run DNS on their own? We, we are using one centralized DNS service for the entire government in Oslo, <laughs> as an example. Can that be done? Is it possible? Would somebody accept that? DNSSEC also means that the DNS packets will get bigger in size because of the digital certificates. And DNS is UDP traffic, fire and forget. They can be very easily spoofed. So on ever average, DNSSEC will allow you to do what we call amplification attacks, attacks and in, in general, those attacks will have an amplification factor of one to nine. I will send one spoof packet to a DNS server, and you will get nine packets to you. So I can have one ninth of your bandwidth and still fill up your entire line with stupid traffic that you don't need. So some people are protesting DNSSEC just because of the amplification attack vector. Some people are saying that, well, DNSSEC, well, yeah, but that's based in, in the root domain of the entire internet. So that means it's controlled by the US government. And I try to tell people, well, if all of us are supposed to put in NSA first and last in our personal threat model, then we have a very serious problem. That's not true. So this is some of the work that I'm doing. Um, the Start TLS stuff, I started in 2004, two years ago. That means 10 years after I started it, the Norwegian government finally put in a recommendation for the government to use it. It's not mandatory, but it's a recommendation. Uh, I'm not sure about Germany, now, uh, Germany. I think Germany have done it. Uh, I know that the Netherlands have done it. They have made uh, DNSSEC and Dane TLSA mandatory for the government in these countries. The UK agency that makes sure that people pay their taxes, and everybody in the UK loves them, they have a blog post saying that after implementing some email security features, they saw that almost 300 million spam emails that were supposed to go out to UK citizens and say, hey, uh, you have, you know, the government wants to give you some free money because you paid too much taxes la last year, so here's a funny link you can click at. They actually saw that 300 million of those suddenly got blocked, more or less overnight, because they implemented some email security features. So what I want you to do, and this is the most important part, not only do I want you to go back to wherever you came from and try to convince your own IT department, if you don't have it already, to implement support for DNSSEC and Dane TLSA, but you also have to go out to Cisco, to Barracuda, and virtually every single provider of appliance boxes that are handling mail, antivirus, and anti-spam features, and tell them that we want you to support the NSSEC and then TLSA verification of incoming and outgoing emails. That's very important for all of you to do. And with that, I will skip a bunch of slides and, oh, and a file. Thank you.